Tell us what were the problems and challenges that uh, the iPhone make that iPhone was facing when trying to get these suppliers parts. What were the te technical issues here? So we've actually been reporting on some of these problems going back a year. Uh, when we first heard that Apple was looking to get OLED, these organic light emitting diode displays, um, we knew that the only person who made that stuff right now is Samsung and no one else really had the capacity. So that's been one constraint. We've also then heard a lot of reporting about the 3D sensors, the, uh, the technology used in the Face ID, which will be um, the standard for unlocking your phone, your iPhone going forward. There have been big problems there. So between all of these different moving parts, and these are the two headlines innovations in the new iPhone, that's created something of a bottleneck. Now, Alex, uh, these Apple shares are actually up about a half a percent today. Is that a function of the fact that there has been a lot of reporting on these supply, supply issues already and that investors aren't fundamentally concerned about demand eventually when, when they finally get the phones out there? Yeah, I mean, there are two factors here. Firstly, it's been reported, you know, Ming-Chi Kuo is an analyst at KGI Securities in Asia. He's already said about 25 million, maybe 30 million. So it's already been pushing in this direction. Um, the other big idea here is, of course, that I can't speak for every Apple investor, but broadly speaking, Apple investors are not buying the stock for how many iPhones Apple sells between November the 3rd and December the 31st. They're buying into what they call the, the super cycle, the, the lifespan of the uh, iPhone 10, which could extend two years, and the optimism that people will buy a lot of this particular version of the iPhone 10 and subsequent iterations. So it's, it's really not a, a, an investment of in one quarter, it's an investment of um, a year or even two. Having said that, the holiday season is coming up. So how is this expected to affect revenue growth for fiscal, say, first quarter of next year? So we haven't yet seen um, any analysts cut their um, their forecasts for, for, for iPhone, uh, well, for, for the Apple more broadly, or indeed for iPhone sales. Um, the fact is that the, the expectation is those sales will still carry on over into the first quarter. The way that Apple's been working it increasingly is to encourage pre-orders or um, what they call the iPhone upgrade program where you pay a monthly fee, and that kind of locks people in to buying this phone. So people pre-order, pre-orders will start this Friday, pre people pre-order this Friday, Friday. They might not get it until January. One, we don't know, but if that were the case, that it wouldn't arrive until January, well, then perhaps it locks them in and means they're less likely to go out and buy a Samsung S8, for example. Mm -hmm.